Hello, everybody. I'm Logan Crawford, and this is the award-winning TV talk show right here on Ebru Fresh Outlook. Well, there is another disease to worry about. No, we're not talking about Ebola. We are talking about measles. It struck first at Disneyland, of all places, in California, and now has spread quickly to 14 other states. Take a look. Measles is a highly contagious respiratory disease which spreads through the air through coughing and sneezing. The disease brings a body-wide rash, high fever, cough, and conjunctivitis. Complications can include pneumonia and swelling of the brain which can lead to deafness or mental retardation. According to the CDC, in the decade leading up to the 1963 measles vaccine, the United States had an average of 549,000 measles cases and 495 deaths reported annually. In 2000, the disease was declared eradicated from the United States. That has now ended. A strain of resistance from parents choosing to not vaccinate their children has opened a gateway for the disease to return. And today, it is spreading. Unless it comes down to religious uh, reasons, I, just, I, I can't find any good reason why, not even that those are good reasons, but any good reasons why you wouldn't be vaccinating your kids if you're gonna be a, you know, a member of society. On Monday, the subject of vaccines became political as Republicans leaped into the debate. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie made comments against vaccines citing civil liberties, and that sparked debate over the liberties of the population at large. It is irresponsible for people to not get their children vaccinated, not only because it puts their children at risk of getting the measles, uh, it also puts at risk uh, the uh, children, other children in their community if it's infants who are t too young to get the vaccine uh, or children who have compromised uh, immune systems that they can't get the, the vaccine. We are back live on set now. Let me introduce you to the Fresh Look, Fresh Outlook Think Tank. We are joined by Dr. Vincent Aletto. He is a board certified emergency medical doctor based right here in New Jersey. Dr. Jenny Feldman, a clinical psychologist from Warren, New Jersey, and Dr. Jose Lopez of Seton Hall University, where he is a professor of physics. And Vince, I'm going to start with you since you're the MD with us. What is measles? Uh, measles is a virus. Uh, it's one of the old childhood diseases. Uh, before the 50s or before the 60s, when you had the vaccine, children got the measles. and. Um, most of the time, everyone was fine. Uh, a few cases would go on to get complications, but for the most part, most children lived. Now, when I had to get my children vaccinated, it was 20 years ago, and it was right around the time when the whole autism and MMR debate was raging. I was scared to death to do it. And the doctor at the time, the pediatrician, actually told me, I'm going to give your children the minimal dose possible. So. A lot of people had concerns. A lot of people have concerns. Has this report that linked the MMR shot to autism largely been debunked at this point? Uh, pretty much so. The person who authored that study, uh, I think it was a Dr. Wakefield, or, mm -hmm. Wakefield. He, um, he, he actually was funded by a group of uh, attorneys who had a lawsuit against one of the companies that uh, would engineer the, the vaccine. And uh, it was found that his work uh, was pretty much biased. He drew the conclusions he wanted to draw. The, in other words, he made the conclusion first and kind of supported it with his, um, with his research. Uh, the co-authors actually withdrew from that study. Janie, I'm going to turn to you a little bit and talk about fear. Fear of contracting this disease, fear of a parent inoculating their child, mm -hmm. um, perhaps needlessly. See, my thought was is mm -hmm. if everybody else has the vaccine, my kid doesn't need it. The problem with that thinking is if everyone had that thinking, then there wouldn't be the, the herd inoculation and then there would be the um, results we're seeing right now where people are contracting it. Um, but fear is um, an emotion that's based very largely in the unknown. And so we have this very scary thing that we all know in front of us, autism. And it's, it's here in our neighborhoods and, and we have friends and family who have autism and we don't know and where it comes from. And it's there in epidemic numbers too. It, I mean. it is, but we don't know where it comes from. So that's the unknown. So you draw a parallel between when you are given those inoculations at, at one and two years of age and when autism first shows up. And what some people have done is they've drawn the connection um, I believe falsely because uh, the correlation doesn't mean that it's a causative factor.
but fear envelops the situation and it motivates um, people to react and so you have the Wakefield report and no one wants the um, autism we know what it is measles is something how many of us have, have encountered measles personally it, it's, it's not something that well that's my next question I'm gonna uh, send it your way uh, Jose I'm scared as an adult who got that shot back in 1963, probably, mm -hmm. as to whether or not it's effective. Well, if, if it is effective. I mean, if you look at the statistics... Uh, I mean, it, decades later, it's still it, effective? It's, it's absolutely still effective. I mean, if you look at the statistics, be prior to 1962 onward, you, we had so anywhere between as high as 800,000 people that were being infected with measles. And then after 1963, we see a drastic, drastic, I mean, literally almost a zero drop from hundreds of thousands to hundreds to in 2004, so this is more than 40 years later, it was about 38 cases of measles in the entire country at that point. So that, that is just statistical proof that this is working. I mean, without any, any fact, that is absolute fact that, that uh, vaccines work, especially in this, in this in measles. So is this like a selfish response on the part of some parents who say, everybody else is gonna get it, my kid doesn't need it because he's protected that way? We were talking about the herd mentality that uh, Janie talked about before. I mean, I personally don't get it. I mean, a lot of states like New Jersey in particular, the, the laws are in place that before your son or daughter can go to school, you need to get these shots. But there's always some verbiage at the through. bottom that right. says, unless there's a religious objection right. or a philosophical objection. In fact, we're debating that right now in Vermont, whether or not philosophical objections to but the- the proof uh, is overwhelming. The vaccines work. Right. I mean, they've created a standard of living. I mean, you could comment seeing it more, more even than I can, but, but as scientifically, if you look at the proof is overwhelming, scientific proof that the, it's effective, it works. All vaccines, not just for measles, are working. Vince, how do we address this outbreak or this reemergence of a disease that we thought we had eradicated back in around the year 2000? Um, the only way that you could stop the spread of this is to quarantine the people who are uh, getting it. Uh, and you have to make certain that these people are placed uh, in situations, uh, house arrest or whatever you might want to call it, and uh, they have to stay there through the incubation period. Otherwise, they are going to spread it. The scary part of this whole thing is the presentation. It presents like a cold. Mm -hmm. You have a, a cough, some sneezes, the tip-off is the conjunctivitis, the red eyes. If you see someone like that, high index of suspicion, and you should really start culturing them uh, to see if they do have the disease. And you culture their blood? You culture yes. their throat? Okay, yes. you culture their blood. J Janie, how do we convince parents to bridge that gap between fear and responsibility? That's a really great question. Unfortunately, the problem with the fear is that there, there are people like... Um, uh, Wakefield, who um, are putting um, messages out there on Facebook and the internet, and uh, there's this other, I don't know if you call it a counterculture, but there, there are people who are firmly convinced that it's dangerous, and, and there's, there's nothing in the evidence of sound research that says that um, these uh, vaccines are dangerous. These anecdotal ghost stories, for some reason, seem to take hold. People mm -hmm. want to have a bad guy. People want to have a boogeyman. They yes. want to have something to blame. They mm -hmm. kind of want to turn their back against conventional science and say, aha, I'm smarter than the rest of you. Right, and so if I eat the right foods and I don't eat this and that, and I don't, then I don't have to take the additives. And, and the problem is we don't have an understanding of why so many kids are getting autism. And so until we have that information, the fear is going to um, continue because everyone's looking to um, avoid autism. We know what that is. It's, it's a really um, disabling condition and it's lifelong. The measles, we don't know. It's, it's, it's not something that's been around. So let somebody else get it. It's not that fatal. And, and so it, it's easy to just dismiss it. It certainly it. looks horrible. Jose, let me ask you, are we doing enough on a governmental level? Has the CDC addressed this enough, in your opinion? I mean, I would not categorize this as an outbreak at the current moment. I mean, the, the, there's over 100 cases at this point. About 95 of them have been in California. So I think the CDC and the local authorities are doing what they can with, with the situation. The, the, one of the things that does scare me that I'll, that I'll add to our conversation here is that in medical school, they don't even go over this anymore. It's one of those things that's kind of put in there and you know mentioned, oh, by the way, measles, they show them a few pictures as we had in our package, and that's about it. So you have doctors, young doctors, that are going out there 
that, that where cases are coming in, as we've seen in California and Chicago and a recent case here locally in, in Jersey City, and they're not even sure if it's measles. And they're sitting there looking at it. And it's, it's the young, older doctors that have experienced, have seen it. I mean, if this was the 1930s, a grandma or mom would, would see their child and know immediately it was measles. But we've gotten to the point where our medical professionals are not even aware of this disease. It's Vince, scary. you're nodding a lot in he's, agreement with that. It's he's so right. right. In the 1990s, I was in um, uh, CHOP in the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I was there for a conference. And um, they put up a picture of pertussis. This fellow had pertussis. And the, the gentleman who was up there, the speaker, said, OK, what's this? And there were probably 2,000 people in this audience. No one said a word. I yelled out, it's whooping cough. <laughs> right. And the guy says, who's the old guy? Because <laughs> no one sees it anymore. Well, and it's he, almost a cultural exactly thing that people right. don't respect uh, experience. I, I had diagnosed someone recently uh, with the mumps. It was about two years ago. He was from a different country, had mm -hmm. never gotten inoculated. And I called over the pediatricians to take a look because they never saw it. Yeah. So, yeah, he's right. Janie, let's talk about where this outbreak seems to have originated, which is a very congested area, Disneyland. Yes. I remember when I was growing up, my mom used to tell me that they didn't go to the movies uh, because mm -hmm. of polio, uh, and they wouldn't mm -hmm. go to crowded places because they didn't have the vaccine. Um, it seems to me that these choke points, if you will, such as Disney World, are where you are probably at highest risk of contracting something like this. Okay. Agreed? I, I would agree. Uh, and so I think for some people there would be the avoidance of these places. I think right now people are still trying to figure out what's going on and how can they protect their children. Absolutely. Let me politicize this a little bit. And some politicians have suggested this, that perhaps undocumented immigrants are to blame. Uh, Rush Limbaugh has suggested this, that they're coming from countries where they're not necessarily inoculated, they're not screened for health care and diseases before they enter the country. I'm not putting any validity in that thought, but I just want to put it out there in our conversation. What are your thoughts? Oh, I think most of the cases uh, that, that we've seen so far in California have been Americans. Um, the, there's the, 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 where it came from is still a question. I mean, measles, to, to, to answer what you were saying earlier, is an infectious disease. It's airborne. It stays on surfaces for hours. I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of two, three hours. It could still be on a surface. If you have a room filled with a few, uh, let's say, 100 people, just to make easy statistics, 90 people would get it, and about you know eight of them would not. So it's highly infectious at, at that point there. So it doesn't matter whether you're coming from whatever country you're coming from, wherever. If you have not been vac 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 vaccinated for it, you're, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. It's shocking, though, that so many people aren't vaccinated for it. I mean, because it does seem routine that you bring your kid to the doctor, the pediatrician, and over those first few years, that's all they do is repeatedly go to the doctor to get shots. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell me about separating the um, vaccine. That was talked about as well, that the MMR bundle wasn't uh, palatable to some, and some people are actually getting the measles shot, the rubella shot, and the mum shot separately. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Um, a lot of pediatricians will actually give multiple, multiple vaccinations all at the same time. Yeah. The, the varicella, along with the MMR, um, you know, you've got so many vaccines, um, they try to get them into you as quickly as possible. For and protection against More likely multiple. to save your life than to take your life. Absolutely. We, you know, we've seen so many things, the Haemophilus, the HIV vaccine. Mm -hmm. I, in 30 years, have seen maybe two cases of uh, meningitis in, in the children uh, because they have that vaccination. Wonderful vaccine. Everybody should get that. Absolutely, hands down. Janie, final thought on yes. the topic of uh, vaccinating your kids, advice to parents? I think what parents need to do is really look at the research because the research shows categorically that the vaccines are safe. It's not anecdotal reports, it's, it's not any mystery, it's, it's going and looking at hard, legitimate research. And that will show that the vaccines save lives and eradicate the disease, and hopefully we can get that place soon. Okay, sounds great. I was getting my puppy his shots about two <laughs> years ago. I said to the doctor, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm afraid he'll get autism. And <laughs> funny. Anyway, when we return, we're going to talk about President Obama's spending plan. Some say it will reduce the deficit. Other people say that it will redistribute wealth. We'll analyze it when we come back.